Who is the actual owner of the Timberwolves right now? I mean, there's Lurie and Aaron Rodriguez, A-Rod. He's, they're, they're supposedly buying the Timberwolves, right? In 2021, they started the payments of a $1.5 billion buyout of the majority for the Timberwolves. Well, uh, they've made the payments here and there. They've made the payments here and there. And now Glenn Taylor, owner, is saying, hey, uh, it looks like you guys uh, missed this most recent payment. And uh, based upon that, we're going to maybe pull back here. Or So this has turned into a bit of a fight, a little bit of a, a street fight. Now, I think it's all going to get taken care of. I think a lot of folks are going to figure out, you know, the, what was right, what was wrong. It, were they late on the payment or did they? Everybody's got an opinion. If you talk to one side, everything is fine. You talk to the other side, not everything is fine. They've got some pushing going on back and forth right now. And Glenn Taylor is fighting for a lot of those other folks that are part of the ownership. He is the major owner of the of this whole thing. I find it really interesting for a team. They don't need any distractions. When you look at the Minnesota Timberwolves, they've had one of the best years they've ever had. This goes back to the Kevin Garnett days. But they've already got 51 wins. It's been a great year. They've got a guy in Anthony Edwards that I have said to people in Minnesota for a long time, hey, look, this guy is a superstar. He's 22 years old. He's already been in the NBA multiple years, and he's absolutely one of the most electric players, I think, in the entire NBA. Will he get the MVP? Probably not. Is he deserving? I would say he's very, very close to deserving because when you look at what he's able to do with his powerful dunks, his powerful blocks, all the things that he brings to the table, he also averages about 26 points a game. He does great with rebounding. He plays defense a lot like Michael Jordan. Some people have compared him to that. I don't think if I'm Anthony Edwards, I don't know that I want to be compared to Michael Jordan at all. But I will tell you this, John and I used to see Michael Jordan a lot. We knew him a little bit, and he's an amazing player. We watched him in Chicago. Unbelievable what he was able to do. The one thing I would say, the way he floated in the air was like no other player I have ever seen until Anthony Edwards, who now is hitting his head on backboards and everything else. So I think it'll be very, very interesting. This is going to be a little bit of a street fight between the ownership going on with the Timberwolves but the players don't care because let's be honest, if you're a player, do you really care who the owner is? As long as you're getting your check, as long as everything is going right, you're probably still pretty willing to have your focus be on the basketball side of it. Let them figure out the ownership side of it. So I'm not worried about it from that perspective, but it sure is interesting to see some big money guys out there trying to go at one another. And it's it's going to be an interesting fight that might last a little while. So it'll be it'll be interesting to see how they all get this thing together. March Madness. We talk about March Madness all the time with basketball. And this year, it lived up to the name probably as much as any year because NC State is a number 11 seed. What have they done so far? Well, they beat Texas Tech. They beat Oakland, who had unbelievable shooters on that team and a legendary three-point shooter on that team. They beat number two Marquette. And then this weekend, well, they took out number four, Duke. And so it's been an unbelievable run. They're a 11 seed, as I said. This goes back now that they're at the final four. This is going back to the Jimmy V days. I mean, this is an unbelievable run that they've had. And, and it's really, really cool. I would also say this. We talk about Cinderella teams all the time. Well, Cinderella right now for NC State is a gentleman by the name of DJ, Bur DJ Burns Jr. I would highly recommend you go onto YouTube or anywhere and, and try to find any of the highlights because this big man, six foot nine, 275, maybe 295 pound guy who's out there playing at a high level and shooting from everywhere on the court. He had an unbelievable night against Duke, the Blue Bloods. He was 13 of 19 shooting. He had 29 points. I would say that he had a very Cinderella type weekend. He might not look like Cinderella and he does not, but this guy had an unbelievable delivery when it counted most. And now they're on to the next and last levels of the final four. So this, this should be really exciting. I think it's always exciting. There's always one team out there that everybody is shocked by. I would say NC State is that team because being number 11 and going up against teams like number two Marquette, 
who a lot of folks had had going pretty far, if not the final four, very, very close. Well, they were very, very close, but that game ended up not even being all that close with NC State. So a lot of excitement. The final four is here. We've got a lot of basketball today. We'll give it a little bit of football again tomorrow. But, folks, have a great one. We appreciate you watching the Rebels Edge. John is traveling to parts unknown. Actually, they are known, Miami. But we're looking forward to this 10X conference. It should be a lot of fun. Until then, we'll see you tomorrow at 1 p.m.